Today on Rappler. This was a heinous and cowardly act. And given what we now know about what took place, the FBI is investigating it as an act of terrorism. U.S. President Obama says the Boston explosions are an act of terror, but it's unclear who's behind them. North Korea bars the delivery of supplies to South Koreans in the Kaesong Industrial Zone. And Chairman Sixto Brillante says the Commission on Elections will ask the Supreme Court to resolve the case on airtime limits. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. U.S. President Barack Obama says the Boston bombings are an act of terror, but it's still unclear who's behind the attacks. On Monday, two bombs exploded near the finish line of the Boston Marathon, killing three and injuring at least 140. In a statement, Obama says the motives and identity of those responsible remain unclear. This was a heinous and cowardly act. And given what we now know about what took place, the FBI is investigating it as an act of terrorism. Anytime bombs are used to target innocent civilians, it is an act of terror. What we don't yet know, however, is who carried out this attack or why, whether it was planned and executed by a terrorist organization, foreign or domestic, or was the act of a malevolent individual. On Tuesday, the Federal Bureau of Investigation says no one has claimed responsibility for the attacks. In a press conference, FBI Special Agent Rick Delorier says the range of suspects and motives remains wide open. Delorier says investigators recover items from both blast sites, including black nylon bags in which the bombs are believed to have been hidden. He adds fragments of BBs, that's ball bearings, and nails possibly contained in a pressure cooker device are also recovered and sent to the FBI laboratory for analysis. North Korea bars the delivery of supplies to South Koreans in the closed Kaesong Joint Industrial Zone. Ten businessmen representing the 123 South Korean firms in the Kaesong applied for permission to visit the zone to bring food and supplies to their staff two weeks after the North blocked all access to Kaesong. North Korea denied the request for a visit. Unification Ministry spokesman Kim hyung Sok says, quote, It's very regrettable that the North has rejected the request and disallowed a humanitarian measure. Around 200 South Koreans remain in Kaesong. On April 8th, the North withdrew its 53,000 workers in the industrial zone. North Korea dismisses Seoul's offers of dialogue as a, quote, crafty trick. It says the South wanted to shift responsibility for Kaesong's closure, which Pyongyang insists is forced by Seoul's, quote, warmongering statements. Some senatorial candidates opposed the Supreme Court decision stopping the Commission on Elections from implementing airtime limits on political ads. Under Comelec Chair Sixto Brillantes, national candidates only have 120 minutes on all TV networks and 180 minutes in all radio stations. In a tweet, Bayan Muna Representative Teddy Casino says, With its order, the Supreme Court has allowed only ads. San Juan Representative J.V. Ejercito says the airtime limit set by the Comelec levels pl levels the playing fields among candidates. The Supreme Court decision prohibiting it is not for a fair campaign. Zambales Representative Mitos Magsaysay questions the timing of the release of the court's decision, which comes less than a month before the May 13 polls. But Senate Minority Leader Alan Peter Cayetano hails the decision, saying it will let voters in rural areas have access to information about candidates. In February, broadcast networks GMA7, TV5, and the Kapisanan ng mga broadcaster ng Pilipinas says the Comelec rule violates people's right to information. In past elections, Comelec, under Chairman Benjamin Abelos, imposed a more liberal interpretation of the law, 120 minutes per TV station and 180 minutes per radio station. Commission on Elections Chair Sixto Brillante says the poll body will ask the Supreme Court to resolve the case on airtime limits a day after he said he's considering resigning following a series of court decisions against Comelec. On Tuesday, Brillante criticizes the Supreme Court for issuing a status quo anti order on his airtime rules, saying he expected a decision on the merits of the case two months 
after complaints against the rules. For the May 2013 polls, Kamalek reverts to the original rule on airtime. National candidates only have 120 minutes on all TV networks and 180 minutes in all radio stations. Brillantes criticizes the High Court for its process in issuing temporary restraining orders and status quo anti-orders. Mali kami, sasabihin nila, may grave abuse of discretion. Yun ang authority ng Supreme Court under the Constitution. So, sa mga kutuwin sa mga kutuwin? Eh, kung walang grave abuse of discretion, at wala naman grave abuse kung TRO o status quo ang in-issue, therefore, wala kaming mali. Wala pa. Ngayon, sasab ko, sabihin nyo na, huwag nyo na kaming ibiting pa na o status quo, TRO. What do you mean, Chairman? The Lakas Christian Muslim Democrats endorses four more senatorial bets, bringing the number of candidates it supports at the national level to 10. On Wednesday, the party announces it supports Nancy Binay and Richard Gordon of the United Nationalist Alliance, Cynthia Villar of Team Pinoy, and Eddie Villanueva of Bangon, Pilipinas. Last week, the party announced its endorsement of six other candidates, four from UNA and two from Team Pinoy. Lakas President Leyte Representative Martin Romualdez says the last two slots will depend on the decision of Lakas CMD members at the local level. But the party, quote, strongly recommends Senator Lauren Lagarda, Margarita Cojuanco, Ernesto Maceda, and Miguel Zubiri for the last two slots. The Supreme Court holds oral arguments Tuesday on consolidated petitions seeking the nullification of Sections 80 and 81 of the Mining Act of 1995. Justices study the petitions on whether to strike down as unconstitutional the provisions on the profit-sharing agreement or amend the law's Department Administrative Order. Petitioners Risa Ontiveros, Teddy Casino, Erin Tanyada, and others say Sections 80 and 81 puts the government at a financial disadvantage. They say Section 80 limits the government's share in the Mineral Production Sharing Agreement to excise taxes, while Section 81 limits the government's share to taxes, fees, and royalties instead of allowing full control on the development of mineral resources. They also say the DENR Order 0712 results in the inequitable sharing of wealth. Justice Antonio Carpio says prescribing the terms in the profit-sharing agreement is within the president's discretion. But Justice Presbitero Velasco Jr. says it's better to amend the department order than nullify the provisions of the Mining Act. Former Constitutional Commission member Christian Monsod says the profit-sharing agreement does not consider, quote, the negative externalities of the mining industries, such as displacement. The Foreign Affairs Department appeals to overseas Filipino workers camping outside the Philippine consulate building in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, as the crackdown on illegal and overstaying migrant workers continues. On Tuesday, DFA spokesman Raul Hernandez says, quote, Please do not risk your health and safety by setting up camps and exposing yourselves to the elements. Filipino migrant rights groups Migrante says the number of Filipinos who set up camp surges to about 1,450 Filipinos in six days. In a statement, Migrante Middle East Regional Coordinator John Leonard Monterona warns the situation could lead to a, quote, full-blown humanitarian crisis if it's not resolved immediately. Hernandez says the government is working at securing, quote, no objection certificates for the Filipinos, which would entail payment of penalties based on their conditions. The process could take several weeks or even months. Saudi authorities will have to verify if the Filipinos have pending cases before their final exit visas are granted. The Labor Department says at least 7,000 OFWs are seeking repatriation. Well, let's now look at Rappler's Rap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number four, a U.S. drone fires two missiles into a Taliban training camp in Pakistan, destroying the compound and killing at least five militants. Local officials say the attack occurs in the Babragar area of the South Waziristan tribal district on the Afghan border. That's a stronghold of Pakistani Taliban leader Hakim Mullah Masood. Pakistan repeatedly denounces U.S. drone strikes, criticizing them as a violation of sovereignty. According to Britain's Bureau of Investigative Journalism, CIA drone attacks in Pakistan have killed up to 3,587 people since 2004, about 884 of them civilians. At number five, 
Taiwan stages its biggest live fire drill since 2008 in an operation involving more than 7,000 troops. The operation, part of an exercise codenamed Han Kuang 29, takes place in the Penghu Islands in the middle of the 180 kilometer strait separating Taiwan from the Chinese mainland. The Army, Navy, and Air Force perform drills to prepare for a defense of strategically important islands from a surprise Chinese attack. President Ma Yingzhu says the live fire exercise is a reminder of China's lingering threat. And at number seven, thousands of Coldplay fans get the chance to be part of a Coldplay endorsed music video made to show the injustice of land grabbing. Produced jointly with British based nonprofit Oxfam, the video features pictures and video clips of people doing familiar things like brushing their teeth or eating in abnormal settings like train tracks or underwater. Oxfam received nearly 7,000 submissions from 55 countries around the world. The film was created by director Matt Whitecross to highlight the dislocation thousands of fam families experience because of land grabbing. Writers, artists, and comic book artists flock to this year's summer Comic-Con. But is this assembly enough to make the local comic industry thrive? Gerald Uy reports. Comics geeks, writers, illustrators, and even superheroes assembled in this year's Summer Comic-Con. This is Mark Rosario, who traveled all the way from Dagupan, Pangasinan to join the convention. He's promoting his self-published autobiographical comic series, My Wife is Pregnant. Uh, during the pregnancy of my wife, ko, and I mean fun experiences. So I thought, let's just go and mix it. And then supportive din siya dun sa idea. So we continued. And then yung mga funny moments, yung mga drama moments, love story moments, ganyan. So halo halo lang. <laughs> More than a hundred comics creators came to the comic convention, selling titles as low as 20 pesos. But summer comic con organizer John Summer still feels that there is a lot of work to be done. Every year, uh, from indie to exhibitors, laging uh, malaming bagong creators na pumapasok. Uh, which is parang ideal naman, pero ang uh, mas gusto namin talaga mangyari, dumami yung publishers. Kasi as of now nga, ang daming creators, pero yung mga nagpapublish mainstream, mainstream meaning may nationwide distribution and everything like that, wala pa rin. Zomer adds, that creators should also focus on production and storytelling to improve the quality and entice publishers to print. But while some chose to self-publish comics locally, others found luck abroad. Stephen Segovia started as an artist for the new San Staple Funny Comics. He wrote and drew Tomas and Colas, a story about a talking cat and a mouse. After working for Funny Comics, Segovia landed a job with Marvel Comics, working on titles like Thor, Extreme X-Men and Spider-Man spin-off series, Superior Carnage. Uh, I decided to send my stuff to Marvel and to other indie, indie publishers in the U.S. And then uh, fortunately, I got some gigs. Uh, keep on pushing, uh, keep on going, uh, never stop drawing. Because I want to stop, it's eh. it, it rained comic book fans and creators here in Summer Comic Con, showing that the country overflows with talented and creative storytellers. Gerald Uy, Rappler, Pasig City. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter, <coughs> excuse me, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator. That's the middle of the front page, which crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top ten stories, which have affected Filipinos the most for that day. If we take a look at the ten stories today, um, you can see the Supreme Court stops Comelec's airtime limits, 86% angry, and that then led to the story that's gotten the most number of votes. Teary-eyed Brillantes to offer resignation, 15% angry, 78% sad. That story, along with the Boston Marathon bombings, lead to the mood of the day. Today, most people are sad. Well, that's Rappler's newscast for today, Wednesday, April 17, 2013. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.